Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm super excited to be here today with some phenomenal women entrepreneurs exploring the theme of uncertainty in entrepreneurship. Definitely the last couple of years in light of the pandemic have been super challenging and we've had so much to navigate, you know, on top of just normal business operations, um, trying to kind of find our way in very uncertain times. So in this conversation, we are going to have an open discussion about, you know, what those challenges look like for each of us, because we are all in different industries. And of course, at the end, if you are not a panelist, you will have the opportunity to um, bring forth your questions. So I would like to kick things off with introductions. So if we could um, first start with Monica, can you tell us about yourself, your company? Thanks. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Monica Fullerton. I am the founder and CEO of Spousely. It's an online marketplace where you can shop a wide variety of both products and services, all created by military and first responder families. I like to call it Etsy meets Angie's List, but with a focus on shopping for social good and supporting our nation's heroes. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Right over to Jolianne. Yes. Hi, hi. Um, so my name is indeed Jolene. I'm from Belgium. Uh, I lived in, uh, in Chicago for four or five years and uh, doing quite some side hustles. And then, then one of the biggest one is yellow. And, and with yellow, we really want to help brands prioritize projects and select their marketing agency partners for uh, the next year. So in fact, we really want to be that, that matchmaker between uh, brands and, and companies on the other side. Fantastic. And you're doing a great job, both of you. Amazing. All right, Eve. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ose. I'm a Swedish by origin. My name is Norwegian to make it more complicated. <laughs> uh, I'm the CEO uh, of a, co a company called Natural Nuance. Uh, we provide sustainable luxury accessories uh, and um, design uh, for circularity. So we're trying to do our bit to make this uh, luxury industry a little bit more sustainable. And uh, very happy to be here today. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks so much. And I am 17% Scandinavian myself. So Norway. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Super. I know. It's just like sneaking it in there, in their mm -hmm. uh, DNA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Liza, and let me know if I totally butchered your name, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Liesel. Um, I'm also in Belgium and I'm the founder of Travel Consulting. We're in a niche innovation consultancy helping small businesses to grow, especially cross-border. And we've created a program for women founders, uh, meeting a need of uh, women to network with one another and manage to thrive in a very male-dominated uh, society. Fantastic. All right, over to, is it Shima or Shima, please? It's Tell actually us. both, so that's good, <laughs> depending on how you want to pronounce it. Uh, but let's go with Shima for this time. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Shima as well. I'm from the Netherlands, uh, located in Amsterdam. Um, I'm VP of a data company. I run the sales team. I also have my own company called Sales Scaler, where I help entrepreneurs build their sales strategy and uh, scale up their sales. Uh, and in my free time, I also volunteer for Foster Kids. Uh, it's actually my brand from Foster Child to Sales Queen. And that's basically a little bit what I do. I love that. Thank you. And last but not least, Ina. Hi, everyone. My name is Ina Ginon. I'm um, originally from Russia, but I live here in the U.S. last 10 years already. I'm CEO and founder of the fashion brand Ina Soul. Uh, I also am a part of the fishing team. I'm a professional fisherman, and we have our own TV show in the Fox Sport TV and the YouTube channel. And also, I have a nonprofit organization, and I'm a volunteer and all, always help with the shelters and pets. I know, you know, what don't you do? You're also an influencer. <laughs> yeah, no, like personal <laughs> brand for influencer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. Fantastic. And just briefly, um, I'm the founder and CEO of Global Marketing and PR Agency, Alter New Media. We believe um, in supporting mission-driven entrepreneurs with achieving their goals while also making a difference in the world. So super happy and honored to be here with all of you. So with that, let's, you know, get into the questions. And my first question um, is really, you know, what was your first thought when the pandemic started, you know, as a business owner? 
obviously, I think for many of us, so many different things are probably going through our head as so much was unknown at that point. Um, I myself had just moved to Las Vegas from LA literally a few weeks before the apocalypse began. So it was kind of, it was very strange timing. And of course, you know, all the things like, was this the right decision or what's gonna happen? Kind of those standard questions ran through my head, but perhaps those questions were more specific for all of you especially as it relates to your individual industries. So, um, you know, we can either go in order or if anyone wants to pop in, we can do that. Um, so I launched Spousely right before the pandemic hit, like literally right before. Um, and I just remember thinking like, wow, this is such bad timing to be literally getting a company off of the ground and running. Um, but I will say it has been a blessing in disguise. Um, now more than ever, people are looking for ways to shop small and to make a big impact. Um, so although it has put some new hurdles and challenges in our way, I feel like it's kind of all we've known, to be honest, since uh, it was right before. So we've just been pivoting, you know, being able to adjust and to cater to both our vendors and our customers' needs. Um, but it is, it is unfortunate because, you know, we always have high hopes and we have this long roadmap when we're getting ready to launch a business. And then, you know, basically this storm of craziness comes in and, you know, as a business owner, we're good at pivoting. And I think that it's been a really great testimony on how strong and capable we are as founders. For sure. And of course, you know, Spousely came at such a huge help to those who are probably uncertain themselves about how to maintain their income, you know, you really empowered them to, you know, either come up with new products and services and present them on your platform or have new more exposure for yes. customers. So that's fantastic. Okay, who would like to go next? Um, Jolianne, anything specific for you? I think it's it's two ways, right? So on one hand, you have the personal side, and then you have the business side. I think right before the pandemic, I went with a friend skiing in, in, in Japan and then, then, you know, it's like just next to it and you don't know what's happening. So it's like, okay, personally, a lot of people are afraid, people are freaking out. And then you come back to a kind of an office uh, because yellow, I was still doing it at the side job at, at that time. And you come back and immediately your, one of my colleagues were like, you know, go away. I don't want you here. And I was like, okay. Uh, and I think it was around the 10th of March it was not even official and and then I really started to you know hit hit me you know what is happening here and then you start to you know um be be more open-minded on more like what is happening and, and but still having a positive attitude okay let's let's make the best out of it so personally wise I, I really had my my moment coming back from uh, from Japan but then business wise I really saw there might be an opportunity there uh, because with Yellow, indeed, we are doing the matchmakers. And I think there's already an overload of marketing agencies on, on the Google platform and people don't know where to find anymore. And, and, and now suddenly companies need to go digital because the offices were closed. So therefore we said it would be great to, to, to start with, you know, with Yellow and, and really find, you know, companies that never were being uh, in, in digital. Let's immediately connect those, uh, like connect those two. So, yeah. But overall, you know, you just, you don't think too much. You just go for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think Yellow probably brought a lot of security and peace of mind to both e-commerce and agencies, you know, during these challenging times, because, you know, you really serve as that liaison or that bridge between them, making the process of finding one another so much easier. Why don't we go right down to um, Ace, this natural yes. nuance. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh... <laughs> Actually, when this happened, I was still in tech. I've been in tech for 20, 20 odd years um, and, and just uh, leaving. Uh, so also a very interesting period to be, you know, not launching my company because I already did it before, but really taking the step out of corporate and into this world. I think the first I was sitting in uh, in the Dolomites on a ski trip when the news came out. And my first thought was, a little bit selfish thinking yesterday I had dinner with some people from Milan. Oh dear. <laughs> um, but the second thought was, this is a big awakening for all of us because like small kids, we've been pushing the boundaries of nature so long and now we're being pushed back and we've been told off. Um, it's not, you know, this is not working. So for me, this was really the feeling Although I, I must admit that I could not imagine what would come next. From a business perspective, we had already set sales to be in slow fashion. And 
it meant that our strategy was already set to have a conscious growth that I like to call it. So from a growth perspective, it didn't change too much the first year. Um, we were rather uh, thinking that it's a blessing to be small. Uh, uh, because we didn't have a huge exposure. Uh, and the fact that we set off as a direct-to-consumer company reduced a lot of the exposure to cancelled orders and all of that. So that, that was lucky. In the second year, though, what happened with supply chains, especially last year, was really starting to hit us. But in all of this, uh, I have to say I am very, very grateful for you know, the opportunity to be doing this and also very happy that my family was safe. So it's also a sign of, you know, grace there to say, okay, um, we did this, we learned from it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, I think the first, the first thing I, I felt um, and what happened next. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been a huge test for our resilience and ability to adapt and you know, just be quick on our feet, really, among so many mm. other things. Um, Lisa, what about you? Yeah, it's interesting you spoke about tech and, and how uh, tech was so important as we went into this crisis. But one of my biggest clients is a software company. I actually sit on there. I'm a director of the Netherlands business. And we had just registered in Amsterdam and the UK, like January of 2019, 2020. And uh, so it was terrible timing to be doing growth in, in tech, we thought, and in my own business, of course, we are women-led and primar primarily women-driven. And so it was panic, you know, because we knew that a lot of the responsibility was going to come on us. And how are we going to grow a business in a time where we were having to navigate multiple children and multiple lives? And so the strategy for both was really focused. And I think that's that's kind of was our first thought is what should we be focusing on? In fact, at the time we went out with a webinar just on how do you focus in this time? What should we be thinking of? And it was just a total going from thinking so big to having to think really narrow just to be able to control what we were doing and control where we were going. And it, I mean, in both instances, in, in both the tribal business and in my clients, it's been it's been a time of incredible growth. But uh, the panic remains because we're not out of it, and um, we're we're still only beginning the journey. And I remember at the time, uh, my son coming home from school and saying his economics teacher had said to them that uh, pandemics will have a six to ten year impact. And we won't get out of it for six to 10 years. And at the time I was like, what? I mean, we were, it was like April, <laughs> we were like two months in. I was like, don't even say things like six to 10 years. I'm going to be six months. September will be, and I guess we all know, we all know better. And I think maybe she was right. Maybe she was spot on. Maybe it is six years until these things turn around. So it's just a question of keeping on adjusting. At first, I thought you said 62 years. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> My mind started spinning back to like Spanish flu. Like, oh, no, <laughs> not 62. Um, no, six years sounds pretty accurate. I mean, already we have passed the, the two-year anniversary for the mm -hmm. pandemic, you know. So, and we're still, like you said, we're not completely out of the woods yet, for sure. And the impacts are going to be felt for some time. Indeed. So thank you so much for sharing that. And over to um, Shima. Yeah, for um, I actually didn't mind the pandemic <laughs> to stay at home. I mind the pandemic, but it was good to stay home because before the pandemic, I don't think I had one minute to think about my next step or what I do or where I bring my company. I was just on a roll. Um, and I always see opportunities in challenges. Uh, I always find a positive way in it. And um, surprisingly, I actually got a lot of customers during 2020 and even 2021, um, mostly because I see a way of selling or adjusting your product or your service in a new way. Um, so for me, it was a new way to figure out, OK, this is a crisis. But often in crisis, whether it's pandem pandemic or financial crisis, there are a lot of opportunities. And. I always think it's up to the companies to either hold your breath, wait, or turn it around and think, you know what, I'm going to turn this into my advantage, um, which some of my customers really did. And uh, I, I love seeing around like how people adjusted themselves, 
adjusted their company into this pandemic, changing the way they were selling or changing the way they were uh, um, providing their services or products, which was actually quite amazing to see how many people were united, how many people, you know, gained uh, strength together or forces. Although I hope we never have this. <laughs> I don't think we are out of the woods. I think it will come uh, hopefully not soon again. Um, but I do think that a pandemic um, showcases you as a company, whether you sink, swim, or have an ability to, you know, build your boat and uh, row yourself through it. Um, so for me, the pandemic was a way to get closer to myself. I started uh, uh, mentoring a lot of kids, younger kids who are in foster care or who are looking to, you know, uh, build their own company. So for me, it was, it felt blessing. I felt blessed to help other people. And uh, I loved um, seeing the way I sell differently or sell for my customer differently. Uh, I'm also from a tech uh, uh, background and I'm working in tech. So it's quite nice to see that there are more women here in tech. And I always say, uh, wherever there is like a door closed or a wall in front of you, there is always solution A to Z. And then we can start with the numbers. I love that. And I love the image of um, the boat, you know, creating your boat and rowing it forward. And I think a lot of, you know, the pandemic, it forces us to be more present in the moment, you know, instead of, of course, as entrepreneurs, we're always forecasting, we're always planning for the future, you know, what do we want to achieve in the next quarter or the next year? And, you know, in the beginning, I think it was like, you know, what do I want to do to make sure I make it to next week or next month? Um, as opposed well, surprisingly, to the, yeah. just to go on on that, surprisingly, uh, one of my customers reached her sales target within six months just because we adjusted the way she was selling and just because we took advantage of the fact that everybody was at home, everybody was in front of their computer, and it was just adjusting the strategy a little bit than what I had uh, initially uh, calculated, which was amazing to see because you wouldn't think, uh, just by the way, for context, she's a video uh, professional, so she makes videos. And she still right. made money in 2019, which was, for me, one of my biggest success where I was like, this is amazing. This is great that we could do it like this. That's awesome. Love hearing that. Um, over to, to Ina, when the pandemic started, did you have any initial thoughts or like, oh my God, moments? Yeah, actually, when the pandemic started, like um, I just opened my boutique in December 2019, uh, my first fashion boutique in a mall. And first three months, we did the great, it was great sales, people loved my brand, everything. And then pandemic happened and I was like, oh my God, what to do? What's going to happen? Like everybody, I didn't know what to expect, like what's going to be with the sales, with the rent. But thank God our mall canceled the rent payments. Uh, we just stayed there for free, of course, because it was closed again, obviously. And uh, but I started thinking like, um, like as always, you have to be like in last updates, uh, you have to like keep your business update with the world uh, situations, issues and everything. Uh, I was thinking, how can I continue to do the business? How can I help people? And because, like I said, I have a fashion brand and a little manufacturer company who I work with. So we started sewing the face masks, uh, which also we donated. Uh, we, uh, we donated to the shelters, to the hospitals. Also, we were selling some uh, masks to get something. And um, like uh, one of you said, it was the great time and the same time to think what to do in the future because I just opened the boutique like local place in a mall and uh, I was uh, going to open online store as well and uh, the pandemic gave me like um, pushed me more to do it faster like you know to work on this uh, much more and uh, thanks to pandemic I started my uh, online store which we produce right now and we will launch the new line soon so like uh, it's a both sides like you know it's like changing the world changing your business changing your life that's what happened like you just stay strong and of course like i said in any situation you just need to go in a like two parallel lines like you and your business and the world situation and what's going to happen you just have to be updated always to do what is going on yes for sure um, my next question is kind of on the heels of the first. Um, for some of us and for many business owners, when everything hit the fan, they decided to introduce new products or services that would be more in line with the, the circumstances and with the pandemic environment, if you will. 
did any of you, I would love to hear from you guys, if you did launch something specific to help you get through the pandemic or something that you thought would um, really be a strong benefit to those who were struggling in the beginning of the pandemic. I'll begin with Monica. So um, since Spousely obviously is a multi-vendor marketplace, all of our vendors are running and managing their own shops. And I will say um, we saw a number of vendors using the materials that they already had on hand, you know, whether it was children's bows that they made or apparel or whatever it might have been, they were taking the resources that they had to create more masks and to donate to different um, places to try to help as much as they could because Obviously, um, when it all first happened, there was a, you know, a shortage in a lot of materials. And so it was really nice to see everyone in our community come together to find ways that they could repurpose what they had to really accommodate what we were all going through. That's awesome. Um, I know in Ultimate Media's case, we introduced a kind of like a pandemic, like an emergency marketing package, something that was really deeply discounted for small businesses, especially brick and mortars that had no idea how to transition to um, the digital world because so much of their business depended on um, pickup orders, delivery you know, for restaurants and then for other companies, you know, they had to shift very quickly to being able to sell online, you know, kind of like you, you know, when you were had a brick and mortar and you're like, well, now I'm going to move to e-commerce. So that's what we did, you know, among other things. I mean, of course, we can also discuss changes that we made internally as well, you know, both within our teams, if we have teams for us, we, you know, we did pare down the team a little bit, um, at least temporarily. And, you know, thankfully we have great people on our team who were very understanding of the circumstances. So, you know, it's really a time that I think also tested our ability to collaborate, right? So that is one of the, the benefits I think of coming out on the other side. Julianne, what about yourself? Yeah, I was thinking about the question and I, yeah, at that moment, like, like Shima really nicely said, you know, you have these people or these companies that need to create their boat to really survive. And I think at that moment with Yellow, we were still in our beginning phase, right? So we could not give anything. So we were really more focusing on how can we create that boat to, to help more people and, and, you know, have that, you know, that big boat behind us that we can help us. So yeah, on, on that end, not immediately on, on, on our side, no. Oh, well, yeah. you, you launched your book in 2019. That's your book true. Was I in the summer yeah. of 2019. So let's not forget that because that was an accomplishment as well. It is, it is. Yeah, that was one indeed of uh, how can you scale companies? So uh, it, it's indeed, it's, it, it's true. Um, how can you help others? Um, yeah, that would be a, a, a nice one, yeah. I didn't even know you had a book, Julianne. We got to get that out there. <laughs> it is. There, there is a book, yeah. Think Big, Scale Fast. Indeed. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, over to Ace. What about you? When the thing started, did you make any specific changes to your offerings? Yeah, so we already, <clears throat> um, as we design for circularity, which means it's all about repurposing and um, um, and designing in a way that you can have a second or third life of your product. Uh, we pivoted a bit from let's say models of of, a, of bags where you would maybe have an evening use to more practical bags. Uh, so from a product perspective, we try to make it even more multifunctional, add more value. And yeah, from a giving perspective, of course, we're still small, but we started a project with an organization called Boki Mamiko. It's um, it's a really lovely project um, in Madagascar, uh, supporting schools and schoolgirls. And I have to say also working with small artisans in Europe, they, you know, <laughs> some of them also are, you know, were hit by the pandemic. So kind of keeping that, keeping that artisanship in Europe was also kind of a mission for us and try to keep up, let's say, our orders and, and all of that. So, yeah, I, I think I think even more focus was also important for us um, in the first year, especially um, just to keep things really uh, thin and and um, and slick. Uh, and that helped, too. So, yes, that was what we were trying to do. And I have to say now, coming out of this a little bit, uh, we actually see a lot of uh, success with those products. So it kind of also helped us to maybe make something faster or launch something faster that 
we wouldn't have launched until next year so in a way also benefit yeah <laughs> yeah that makes a lot of sense and definitely helping the the local artisans as well I think, you know, sometimes we forget like, well, of course, like, you know, our businesses are helping people, even if we aren't doing something very, um, like, obviously impactful. I mean, of course, we do a lot of partnerships with nonprofits and whatnot, but sometimes it's like we forget like, well, just by virtue of having a team that we compensate so they can live their lives, you know, that is a, a benefit and a gift in and of itself. So that's important to remember. And so you were definitely doing that by helping those local artisans you were working with. Um, over to Liesl. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thought when you, you concentrate on, because I don't know that's so deliberate at the time, but in tribal, we focus on, on sort of three pieces. We focus on the business, growing the business, the individual, growing the, the individual's leadership capacity, and then growing our communities. From a business perspective, especially in, in the software space, it was really about how do we go faster? I think a lot of companies that we were working with were really caught kind of with their pants down, not being fast enough as they needed to be from a technology perspective now that the world was online. So it was about how do we package some of our engineering libraries in a way that we can start delivering building blocks to clients so that our experience allowed them to go faster. And that's been really successful actually. And it's almost created an entirely new strategy in how we do software delivery and it's, it's packaging, just engineering excellence. Um, from from the, the individual personal perspective, a lot of that was around how do we think of what women need at the time? And we did a lot around what's going on for women during the pandemic and just the fact that we're now looking at 250 years to economic parity. What does that mean for us? And how has this pandemic set us back? And what more can we do in our program that we run for women grew a lot out of that need. And then we started talking from a community perspective, what is inclusion? And we started doing a research project around what does inclusion even mean? What is it? What is this thing? And uh, we started focusing on the S in ESG and, and how do you get your S on? And how do you really think about being a sustainable company from the aspects of ensuring that you're inclusive and that you are diverse? And, and how do you bring those things together? What does that even mean, diversity, inclusion? How does that have financial impact for you? How does that create sustainability? Yeah, so I guess it was kind of threefold, but all driven by this new awareness that the pandemic brought us, um, that we were blissfully unaware of before, to be honest, our inefficiency and just our lack of inclusion and diversity that really did come to light during that time. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Shima? Yeah, um, well, I, I was already doing Zoom <laughs> before the pandemic, so uh, my main goal during the two years was keeping my team uh, for my full-time job, of course, it's the first thing. And second of all, uh, if any women are looking to this video later on, uh, I did what most people also did during pandemic, which was drinking my wine, not doing so much, laying on my couch, uh, just to, you know, uh, uh, before I discourage some people like, oh my God, these are all hustlers and they're all businesswomen, which you all are and amazing. But I also want to say it's not a problem that you didn't do so much during the pandemic uh, if someone is watching this. Um, I, I, I read a lot during the pandemic, so that's my first thing, right? I did a lot of research, I'm reading a lot, uh, also watching a lot of Netflix, let's be honest. Um, and uh, for me, it kicked off actually um, at the end of 2021, where I started writing down what you need to do for to build a sales strategy. So I decided for this year that I will build an online course because I haven't seen one that has a non, part of my French, non-bullshit way of explaining what selling is without being, you know, too pushy or too uh, icky or uh, I haven't seen that. So I decided to uh, make an online course very easeable for people from actually all entrepreneurs with every budget they have to be able to ha have it accessible for them. Uh, that was the first thing uh, um, that I planned for this year. Other than that, I did a lot of online trainings with uh, whoever wanted. Um, I also offered, um, I do a lot on Instagram. So basically I was just offering, okay, you have a company, let me know what kind of company and let me think with you, what you how you can repurpose your service or product, uh, which I was just doing for free on the side because I thought, well, I have this much time, so let's do that. And, and then I think that uh, other than that, it, for me, it was also seeing, okay, 
how are people handling this? What are people doing? How are they searching? And after a while, you could see that everybody was tired of Zoom, tired of the computer and tired of uh, another course, another webinar, another seminar. Uh, although I do think that we have been pushed into the tech time, uh, and I think we can definitely benefit from that. Um, our intention span has uh, degrees. So I started to go on TikTok to sell some of my services or introduce my skills. I'm not there yet. I mean, it's not, yeah, I'm trying, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out how it works. Um, but I did realize that TikTok helps a lot of company to, uh, as a marketing platform, just to uh, increase your brand awareness of either your product or your service, which completely surprised me how some people do that. Uh, so I learned a little bit about new, uh, new medias to, uh, to promote your things on, which was, is funny and I'm still trying to figure out TikTok. Uh, but I, I definitely recommend everybody to, to start using it for your product or your service. Yeah, I know TikTok is a point of resistance for a lot of entrepreneurs. I know it has been for myself, even though, you know, I'll go on there periodically and kind of find myself entertained. But I think for a lot of like traditional businesses, I think there's no way that they would gain any benefit at all from TikTok. So it sounds like you might have to have a follow-up course to your main sales course on TikTok for sales, anything yeah, maybe, you do maybe. it. <laughs> I, I, because I think as a company, oh, I would say use it, fill at it, uh, make fun of yourself, but definitely use it because what, you're now, what we're now doing is trying to get sales, right? Trying to get new people in, new customers, new clients. But actually what you want to do is build a fan base. Oh, That's for sure. Want, right? It's all about, you know, brand aware. I mean, we could go on about this sidebar all day, all day you know, brand awareness. I'm good advice. Uh, I might do TikTok, uh, <laughs> TikTok uh, training. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. I think you should for sure. And definitely Netflix, although I was working probably harder than I ever worked um, in my business during the peak of the pandemic. I for sure found plenty of time to Netflix it up as well. I think I've done more Netflix this last two years than I have in my entire life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thanks for sharing. Over to Ina. Yeah, like I said, uh, we started sewing face, and ma uh, face masks, uh, which we were donated. And um, like I said in my introduction, introduction that I'm a fisherman and... Uh, like when everybody stayed at home, like, you know, and uh, nobody could even leave their places. Uh, thank God we had the boat in the water and um, I got like some entertainment for people because I understand they need something to see something new in our, around the world. And like I started growing my personal brand. We went fishing almost every day and it actually was very good for our uh, uh, fishing business because we were uh, shooting the a lot of shows we were right ahead of the schedule uh, and uh, people loved it I got so much reactions uh, of all of this stuff it's motivated me to create the also fishing clothing line for women because so many girls uh, was interested about this sport like fishing sport and uh, we took some uh, people uh, to the fishing again uh, for the trips with us, uh, just for entertainment again. And uh, yeah, like pandemic helped me to grow um, my personal brand, like Instagram. But like you just said about TikTok, I need, yeah, please create this TikTok course. I need <laughs> somebody who will help me with that because I just registered there and, and, and I understand that it's a very good platform as well where you can go and get more customers and reviews and everything. Just need to start doing it. Just so much is going on. Yes, I love that. <laughs> I can't wait. I'll totally be your first influencer. You got to teach me though. I can't fish for, you know. Thank you. You just need to come here. <laughs> we will take you on the board. And yes, it's, please. It's so much fun and it's very good. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. So um, obviously, most of our conversation today has really surrounded the pandemic and challenges specific to the pandemic, but the theme of uncertainty is, you know, it permeates every day of our lives as entrepreneurs, you know, irrespective of whether or not we're contending with global crises, right? So I would love to hear from you, you know, what maybe one or two moments of immense uncertainty outside of the pandemic have, you know, been very challenging for you and how you have navigated those um, moments or instances of uncertainty? 
I'll start with Monica. Um, for me, I would say the uncertain pieces are obviously as a solopreneur um, that is self-funding, something that is much bigger than myself. I think it's always the unknown of how quickly can I continue to grow with little funding that I have that I'm putting behind it. And I think it goes hand in hand with everything we're talking about, because I feel like half of the most amazing businesses out there end up failing or not going all the way through because of a funding issue. And I think that that's something that's really important that we talk about, especially as women, because, you know, women are not receiving funding as quickly as men. And a lot of times, you know, we're self-funding because we don't want to let the wrong people into our company. We're very like, you know, mama bear over everything that we're building. And I think that all goes back to like, you know, just uncertainty in general for me. Um, it's been like, okay, what do I do next? What's going to be able to continue growing? Who can I trust? Should I keep self-funding? Should I bring in investors? Um, and I think uh, that's an important topic that I would hope, you know, a lot of us can kind of touch on too when it comes to uncertainty. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I think funding, you know, especially for women entrepreneurs, which I was partaking in a conversation about that yesterday, it, you know, is always top of mind for us, particularly, you know, as we're, growing a company, bringing in team members, you know, are we going to keep self-funding? Are we going to bring in, you know, um, outside capital, whether that be from a loan or an investor, or, you know, pros and cons of everything. Who do we even seek counsel from? I mean, it could, it just opens up such a, it's like a domino effect. I mean, you think about one thing and then you think about two other things and that thinks about two other things. I know for sure, like, that's probably how your mind is going, Monica, because it's definitely how my <laughs> mind goes sometimes. And yeah. another, yeah, go ahead. And I was just going to say, I think it all boils down to, you know, I've spoken with a number of investors now. There's so many that are super excited and ready to invest, you know, like tomorrow on Spousely. But then I've also spoke, have spoken to some other investors that are like, well, you're a mom, you're a military spouse, you are a solopreneur. And it's like, well, you should probably have a co-founder. You should probably, how are you going to juggle since you are a mom? And, you know, what does that work-life balance look like? Like all of these questions. And it's like, I feel like that is just ways that we continue to get clouded on this journey because then we get in our own head like, well, um, yeah, I can do it, but why doesn't this other person see that I can do it too? As right. For me, it's a, you, it's a hot topic, especially because I am at that point where it's, I either bring on investors or I continue to self-fund and, you know, grow a little bit sm slower than I would with, with funding. For sure. I mean, just on the heels of that, were these folks asking those questions, like the work-life balance question as an example, were they women or were they men? Men. <laughs> and I've been told like, <laughs> well, you know, you're not um, the best CEO because you care too much. I've been told that before. And I'm like, yeah, I care yeah. because this is my community. I created this company because I, I am a part of it. I do care. I'm pouring everything into it. And a lot of times that you'll see a lot of the women owned businesses are usually stemmed from something that you know, we're either super passionate about, we want to make an impact and it's not just about how quickly can we grow and scale. We will also want it to be as impactful as possible. Right. And just one last thought about, you know, bringing in investors, you know, when I was participating in the conversation yesterday about funding, it was really like, you know, look, like if you bring in investors, particularly VC funding, the expectation is that you grow in like 100 X multiples. And, you know, then you start to worry, is this going to compromise on the quality integrity of my products and services? And in your case, you know, for that of the vendors who of course you're very protective of and want to make sure that their interests are always top of mind. So, I mean, absolutely. I mean, this is a conversation that we could, you know, go on specific to funding on and on and on. Um, you know, I, I know in my case and a lot of other entrepreneurs, like they don't always think about how growth can kind of be the impetus for a lot of uncertainty. Sometimes you think, well, if we're growing fast, that means that everything is figured out and everything is perfect. But in our case, we, um, 2021 was our biggest year. I think we grew from 60% from 2020 in 2021. And that required bringing in a lot, um, you know, quite a few more team members. And then, oh my gosh, like we have to streamline operations and do all of these other things that you don't always anticipate. So, I mean, I think even in a growing time, when you're growing as a company, your revenue is increasing, um, you know, that it still brings about a certain level of uncertainty that you have to navigate and ensuring that, you know, is everything going to be delivered properly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
Um, you know, yeah, it's sorry, I didn't mean to like pivot off of the main question, but I think, you know, having so many amazing women here today, I think it's something that's very important that we all touch on. We're all in different industries. I would love yeah. to know kind of what that's been like. And I think a lot of people listening want to know too. So absolutely for sure. Which is why we're chatting about that. I mean, it could be a whole nother panel too. I mean, there's just so much to unpack on this issue specific to funding. Um, Jolianne, what about yourself? I think, you know, uncertainty comes indeed in many ways, right? Like Monica already touched base. And um, one thing I always learn, you know, you have one comes on this and that is change in your life or, or uncertainty and, and it's how you deal with it. And I must say, you know, for me, one of my biggest learnings would always say true to yourself, regardless, you know, if you have the people like indeed and Monica is saying, the guys that are saying, you know, no, you're a woman, you're a mom, you cannot do it. So therefore stay true to yourself, you know, and, and that's really also my mindset. And, and one of the learnings I am, you know, this is who I am, you know, stay cool, be optimistic, uh, be agile, be creative and, and you know, make your bo- boat, as you already mentioned, right? So, and, and go with the flow, um, take the unknown and, 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 and you, know, you know, celebrate it, but really take it and, and move forward, you know? You can listen to all the people that say, no, you cannot do it. And just in, in, in the whole pandemic world, right? If you would listen to the left people, you know, you are doomed. You, can, you need to stay in your house. And then the right people are like, yeah, it doesn't even exist. So where do you find yourself in the middle? And, and, and uncertainty you will always have for me. And, and if you're saying, you know, true to yourself, you know, and, and you know what you stand for, then, then for me, that, that's always my biggest learning, uh, really finding that, that, that balance and, and achieving a kind of a healthy mindset. Um, and focus on the things you can change. So that would be uh, my part. For sure. Yes. I love going with the flow. I mean, it's like you can be prepared and strategic while still understanding that, you know, you have to take it day by day and just kind of allowing yourself to kind of navigate those waters accordingly. For sure. Um, But also like, like I already said, yeah, sorry. Like, you know, take, take a moment for yourself as well. You know, it's it's fine to, to watch Netflix or to watch, you know, to drink a glass of wine. I'm also guilty on that. Definitely the latter. So, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> make the uncertain, well, to put it more certain, I would say. Yeah. All you ladies in Europe have the best of the best wine wise. So <laughs> <laughs> we will not complain. We will not complain. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, on to Ace. Yeah. So really great topics. And I'm enjoying to hear uh, about, <clears throat> you know, um, all of this because it's with other powerful like local alliances where we, if it's creating a pop-up together, just having fun. By the way, there was some wine there too. <laughs> Sales. <laughs> so, uh, but also in general, growing partnerships because it roots you. Um, if you have others, so I built, I think four or five different, I'm signing up some more now, online partnerships. Um, but also those sales partnerships with um, mostly other women, not always women, technology partnerships. And it's like being a tree. You, you really, with those partnerships, you go down, you ground yourself, um, and you help yourself mutually. And it's been amazing, really, for me uh, last year to feel that. Um, also part of some women's associations here in Europe that have been also great in terms of really bringing out the message. So I think there are many ways to grow um, organically without this big (laughs) investor. Uh, Actually, there are many different ways of of getting investment. And I think alliances are also investments. So if you're not ready yet to take on a big uh, investor, maybe think about what kind of partnerships you could get involved um, that could be really, really great. So I think, yeah, that's for me in terms of dealing with um, uncertainties. But of course, I also have a small son, um, older mom. <laughs> so that kind of hits a lot of, uh, you know, thoughts for me too, how to manage all of that. Um, but with the help of some other strong women, it's really, and with my husband, of course, it's really working out well. So yeah, that's my thoughts on on that. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Um, Liesl. Yeah, um, uncertainty, my God. I think when uh, when the pandemic hit, I had just moved to Belgium as well. So I was in a country where I wasn't really good at the language. Uh, I had given up an entire career where I came from, having to start something new, starting a new business, 
and then pandemic. So it was like uncertainty overload. And I am so not a go with the flower. Like I'm, I'm like afraid of everything. <laughs> I'm the most afraid person in the entire universe. I have to have a plan or I start freaking out. And so the uncertainty was, was totally overwhelming. And, and Monica, like exactly what you were saying, and how I still feel today is it's almost like there's a kind of rule or there's this book we're supposed to be following of how business is supposed to be and how CEOs are supposed to be and how work is supposed to be and how we're supposed to grow. And I find myself keep on going, why? I, like, I just don't want to be like that. And I think that makes even more uncertainty for this person that hates us. It's like I'm my worst enemy. But anyway, um, I think what, what I, I keep on trying to do and I, I think what we're doing in our business is kind of going, well, let's just do what we get at. Let's just keep remembering what it is we're good at and let's have fun and let's do that and let's just make it up. And if people say you're all women and you all have children and, you know, you're in different time zones and how is this going to work? We're just like, well, well we're going to just do it our way. <laughs> see what happens like have a go and and try and make a plan that works for us not try and make somebody else's plan you know and we keep saying to ourselves we have this kind of thing if it feels too difficult you're doing it wrong um so every time it feels too difficult it's like what are we doing wrong are we working someone else's plan and what should our plan be and so it's kind of totally not navigating uncertainty it's almost like trying to put our own way into this path because I don't feel like entrepreneurship according to the book I don't know I just don't feel like that's what I'm doing I feel like I'm doing something else and I think all of you are pretty much doing something else as well and and I don't think we should have to listen to people saying to us this is the way you know this is the line why you know who decided that maybe we can decide something else and do that and I think that's what women entrepreneurs actually have been doing for centuries they've kind of been going okay yeah but I'm going to try something else and see ya and that's worked out for hundreds and thousands of women entrepreneurs and yeah we should just keep doing that I love that. I think marching to the beat of our own drum is so integral as entrepreneurs particularly as women entrepreneurs where, you know, there's still so many kind of societal expectations put forth for us in so many different ways. And then I think, you know, just in general, like, you know, as entrepreneurs, we are always navigating through uncertain waters, you know, is this service going to be received well? Is this going to generate the revenue that we want it to? Is this team member the right choice, you know, on and on. So, you know, I think, you know, all of our advice so far, it's really like pulling a little bit of all of that, putting it together into one big puzzle and making it work for ourselves. Yeah. And sometimes the pieces say, might, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say to Essay's um, point about having a sort of women tribe, I think that's why women kind of need each other because to your point, um, we are navigating things differently. And if we don't have each other to kind of feel the same, you do kind of feel a bit out of it and like some kind of an alien. But when we're all together and having these conversations, you feel stronger and you feel the same and supported. And yeah, it's so important. Absolutely. Um, on to Shima. Yeah, I think it's actually admiring, Lisa, that you do something differently because uh, entrepreneurship is about adjustment, is about challenge. And I hardly agree with you because I've been working in sales for over 15, 16 years, and it's a male dominated field, as we know. And I've been always working in their time zone, you know, eight to six or whatever. And I, I, I realized last year that it's not working for women, or at least not for me. And that we have a completely different cycle of when we are creative when we do our admin, when we do our other things. And the moment I have embraced that, I've been doing much, much better work-wise, company-wise. And I absolutely love when people tell me you cannot do it because it only motivates me to show you. First of all, I don't care what you think. Second of all, I will show you. So I, somewhere I care. Um, but I do believe that women and female entrepreneurs or, what, or even employees, they should actually embrace the way they work best because we have different qualities and we are we have our strength in, during the week or during the day on different times and um, I think that's beautiful to see to say you know what uh, nice those books they are a guide they're very nice to read 
it's beautiful, but I'm gonna do it like I feel like I should do, and it would, which makes me energetic, which makes me happy. So I wholeheartedly agree with that, and I think that's beautiful. And uh, to come back to you, uh, Monica, when you were talking about investments, I've, I've, we have a saying in the Netherlands. We have a thousand sayings. We have way too much, uh, to be honest. But the saying is, when there is blood going through the streets, that's when you should invest. Maybe it's also in other languages, but I'm just translating in my head from Dutch to English. Um, so for me, last year, I actually invested. I took a risk to invest in a company that I work for. Uh, and I was like, oh, this, is, this can go two ways. Either I'm losing the money. And other way, I was thinking, well, I'm in charge. I'm doing the sales. So if they're growing, it's because me and my team are growing the company. So I decided to invest. And actually, I'm continuing it this year in two ways. One way, Monica, as you mentioned, other ways, A's mentioned, with my tribe of women next to me and uh, bringing each other the best thing from each other up to find people who you collaborate with, who uh, make the best uh, in you. To be honest, uh, um, Jolene doesn't know it yet, but I'm also looking out to Jolene from, okay, could you, you know, can we do something together? And can you maybe help me with, with what I'm, uh, with my marketing part in this? So I do believe that it's beautiful that women are searching other women for help because Honestly, men have their men's club. Uh, unless there is a women's club in every country, we still should search each other out where we can smoke cigars and cognac together. I like that as well. Um, so I do, you know, I, I think finding our way uh, that makes our ha us happy, that finds our energy, uh, I think is the best way uh, for me at least to continue. And because I find my way of working and embrace me as a woman in my cycle, it made me more creative. It made me more energetic. Uh, I got more work done than I ever did with my eight to six work. Um, so that's something, and I, you all inspire me a little bit, to be honest, or a little bit, a lot, to be honest. Uh, it's so inspiring to hear all your stories and how you are, you know, guiding through not only the pandemic, because yes, pandemic is uh, uh, was a global uh, uh, challenge, but entrepreneurship is a challenge. Uh, it can change every day. And I think changing your mind or adjusting your plans is not a bad thing. Love that. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes like I am a little bit like you, Lisa, like I can navigate kind of day to day, but at the same time, I get anxious if my plan that I put forth is not being followed or something disrupts it. It just, I like to plan ahead. Very Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> of me if anyone's into astrology but you know I think at the same time we just we have to accept as entrepreneurs that you know seldom are you going to have a time where things won't change but I do you know I'm a big fan of at least having a plan and a strategy um still at the same time so uh Ina on to you uh, I agree with all of you ladies because uh, if you decided to be an entrepreneur you have to be ready for everything it's already not easy way especially women entrepreneurs and uh, it can happen like anything like tomorrow after tomorrow and when uh, I just opened the business yeah and uh, in three months it's happened pandemic and I found the ways how to survive in this situation right now I continue to do my business and much more and unfortunately happened the worst uh, situation, like a uh, thing in my life, the war between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, and uh, I'm originally from Russia, there is my family. In Ukraine, all of my friends and all of this happening and part of my business in Russia, like, yeah. And I'm trying to, to understand how to help there, like to donate there and at the same time to operate my business. My fabrics, like for my fashion line, stuck in Russia because uh, all of the sanctions, yeah, they closed the country. And even in these situations, I found uh, the exit. I mean, like in each situation, you can you each problem, each situation you can resolve. There is always exits. There is always uh, people who are ready to help. You just need to collaborate, to communicate, of course. There is today in the internet world, NFT and all of this, uh, what's going on around everything is available you just need to to do that like yeah to be active like of course if you will be sitting and crying and like i don't know what to do i will never believe in that it means you haven't tried enough yet because even this close russia i found a way how to got how got my fabrics to in other countries to the third countries always there is the way to resolve always people who are ready to help you just you just need to act 
to do everything for what you can. Like, and uh, like I said, there is even maybe before you even couldn't imagine how many people are ready to help you. Like, you know, and when you start again to looking for it and you will be so thankful, like everything is possible, even in such a worse, worse world situations. Like just believe in yourself, just active. And of course, I agree again with all of you ladies, don't forget about yourself. Sometimes you need the rest, a glass of wine, Netflix, something, yeah, it's necessary. But keep going, like you need to keep going. If you choose the way to be entrepreneur, woman, business owner, you have to be ready for anything. Agree 100%. I think because, you know, we women are so self-reliant just by nature that sometimes we forget um, to ask for help or we feel like some sort of shame in asking for help. I know that can be the case for me sometimes. I mean, I would just rather just do stuff, even as it relates to to delegation. Sometimes just like, ah, like, you know, <laughs> I'll just do it myself, whatever. Um, so, I mean, I think we need to get comfortable with asking for help and that can be, you know, look at so many different ways. It can look like, you know, building a tribe of like-minded women, you know, like you mentioned, um, Liesl, or it can look like, you know, just having um, the ability and the wherewithal also to know when it's time to, to ask for help, to ask for that investor or the funding and, and be okay with that. And sometimes that um, request is going to be uncomfortable. It's not always going to feel good, even if we know the outcome may, you know, take us to, you know, better heights. So because we are obviously sorry, running up on sorry. time. May I ask one oh. question to everyone? Of course, yes. Because you're all like strong, independent women. That's at least how you come over to me. And um, I don't know if you recall yourself who your mentor was when you were a young professional or younger and wanted to grow. I think most of us can say it was either a man and, and not so much female role model, which I think is quite a shame. So I, I was wondering... Uh, what, because we're recording this and because I know that younger women are like really eager to learn new things and maybe seeing you here eh, on this video, what kind of advice would you have for the younger women who are yes. either trying to build their business or who are, you know, if we are scared to ask help, <laughs> how are they going to ask for help? So yeah, what can we Shima, do? Shima, I think, I think we might be psychic because literally oh. <laughs> that was my next, cool. that was my next okay. question. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm monitoring the kids. So I think younger people are really yeah. important in their future. So I think our brains just... are on the same wavelength. because That is literally the next question. Good, so good, you good. just asked it for me. Thank you. Yeah, it's just because I'm imagining my 18 year old self, right? Looking at this video and thinking, I, when I was 18, there was no video. So let's start there. But looking at my 18 year old self thinking, wow, if I had access to internet and seeing these women and I can see, you know, and they give advice of how they did it in pandemic, but how do they do it in general? And, you know, how, how, what can I do? What can I do either to get a female mentor or to be you or to, you know, do what you also do. So that's why I was a little bit wondering, but thank you, Nadia. Nice to be. I love safe. it. I know like her brains. <laughs> um, Monica, you want to start? Yeah. So, um, I know this sounds a little crazy, but I, um, grew up like just being so inspired by Oprah. She was a mental mentor and role model for me. Um, I just loved the power of communication and how she used it, um, just with being able to help support one another, sharing other people's stories. So I actually went to college, like on a mission of becoming the next Oprah, <laughs> um, which is very crazy to say, but, you know, I wanted to go into broadcasting and communications because of it. I really believe if we stay true, exactly what we had mentioned earlier to ourself, to what we love and what we're passionate about. Um, we can do so many great things. I think the biggest problem in our world today is that all we do is compare ourselves to other people. We compare our success to other people's success. And I think, you know, success looks different to everyone, but what we don't see is what it took to get there. And so a big piece of my journey that I hope can help empower and inspire others is that I'm sharing the real along the way. So I always make sure, you know, if I have a win, I'm going to share that negative like the next day because it's the real, the not real, the real, the not real. And it's, um, you know, it's all fluff sometimes of what we see out there. So 
for me, it's trying to share more about what it looks like to get where we want to go. Love that. Um, in my case, I never really had a specific mentor per se. I kind of just, you know, I've been on my own since I was 18 years old. Um, I was initially in the entertainment industry as a professional actor and model. And then I pivoted to freelance writing and then digital production, which made way for marketing. So I really, you know, just figured things out as I went. I often would try and seek counsel from others. And sometimes the response would be, you're doing just fine keep going. And I'm like, okay, that's not really like what I was looking for. I wanted something a little more comprehensive than that. But, you know, I think I've only just recently found some really good mentors, most of whom were in the leadership base. Um, I work with an amazing human named Sherry Wynn, who is a former Olympic athlete from the eighties, who now is a, a leadership coach. So I really like to follow people who, you know, have somewhat of a similar uh, almost non-traditional path is mine. I think we naturally like to look for people who have had somewhat, um, you know, similar paths to ourselves. I would say, you know, if you're young and you're thinking of pursuing entrepreneurship to, you know, reach out to someone that you admire, you know, don't be afraid to do that. Now, granted, you might not be able to reach Oprah if you're, you know, like you can you try, know. but I don't think you it's going to happen. Just you watching her through her show was enough to inspire me. Right. So. right. You never know. If but, you don't you know, try, I, you don't know. This is for sure. I mean, you may as well try, but, you know, look for people that, you know, are in industries that, um, you know, you want to potentially fall into. And I'm a big fan of building um, internships and apprenticeships. We always have a few interns at our company at any one time. So, you know, offer to be an intern for somebody that, you know, you want to shadow and learn from. I mean, I think hands-on work is honestly the best way to, to learn. You know, don't expect people to just kind of like drop golden nuggets in your hand just because it's not life. So that's what I suggest. On to Julian. Nice. Really nice, nice indeed. Uh, a nice question, by the way, Shima. I like it. Um, but going back indeed, like going back, because one of the topics you said, you know, who is your role model? And if I think back, if I'm, you know, 18 years year old, you do your first work, you know, session, recruitment session. And I think, or even was later because I was a nerd and I studied a little bit too long. But, you know, one of the questions that always pops up was like, who is your role model? And, and I always had the three, the, the, the three people, you know, the first one was Margaret Thatcher and it was a, a woman. And I know it sounds crazy, right? It's like 15 years ago, but it's like, she really had a plan to build something. She was a, a, a female, okay, I will not say any, everything good, what she accomplished, but just, you know, she was a woman that was leading a tribe, like Lisa would always say. And I think that was always so for me, you know, so amazing, you know, she just did it, you know, regardless, whatever, what the people would say so that that would always be one of my, you know, you can do it if you want, if you have the mindset to, to make it, you know, know your drivers and, and, and go from there. The second one I always said was the Egyptians, because I'm a very nerd, I'm very mathematics uh, uh, minded, and the Egyptians, they could build pyramids without having the technology that we have today. And I think, you know, if you, if you want, you know, everyone is an entrepreneur, uh, if you really want deep inside. So if you want, you can build stuff, even if it's a big pyramid or something small and, and, you know, talk to as many people if you want, but just, you know, start somewhere. And, and then the third one was, was Michael Jackson. And that was just because of the fun part. You know, you have a person, you know, he's just having entertainment, the social part. And, and, you know, as long as you, you do your stuff and you like to do your stuff, you know, you're, you're good, right? I never stand up in the morning and I think, you know, I need to go to work. I, I stand up in the morning and I love it. So for me, those three components are for me key. And it's just, you know, talk as many people, learn from it, do it with a, a smile and, and, and have fun. I love that. Showing my age here, but my first cassette was a Michael Jackson thriller <laughs> <laughs> cassette. And I had an entire bookshelf dedicated to books around the Egyptians. So Jolien, we are very similar in that nice. um, yeah. set of interests. I love it. Um, Ace. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think this is a really great question. Um, and if I go back myself and I ask myself, what would I tell myself, you know, at that, at that age, you know, uh, younger age, I think what 
I think of now is what I would advise someone younger is really to spend time to know yourself and to trust that you are able to set the vision for your life. Um, you know more than you think, you know, even if you don't have 20 years of job experience, just trust those um, feelings that you have about things and don't be afraid to set up a very bold vision. You know, it might not end up that way, but don't be afraid of that. Um, the other thing is there is so much hype about uh, what kind of personality you need to be to be an entrepreneur. Um, there is a lot of research that says introverts can be great bosses, great entrepreneurs. And even if you're not, you know, up on stage every evening, you know, and you're not the born star in the room and you're maybe the little bit more silent one um, that applies to women sometimes. You could be a great entrepreneur, really a great one, um, especially if you have this ability to listen to others. So I think that's what I would say um, if someone asked me. Love yeah. that. And I agree. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be like extremely like, woo, like, hi, like, <laughs> give me the spotlight to, to be a good entrepreneur for sure. Um, everyone's different. On to Liesl. Yeah, so I, I think my first piece of advice would be to kind of Natasha Bedingfield it, you know, your book is still unwritten um, and, and write your book your way. I think that would be the first thing. And the second would be to kind of, if I think back when I was younger, I always felt like I was a weird little girl, you know, and I spent probably my first age five to 25 trying to not be weird and, and fit in. And then since then, I've been trying to figure out where that weird little girl is and be her again. And so I think my advice to young women would be you, you, that weird little girl, she's perfect. She's perfect. Just, just do it her way. Go with what she can do well and be her because she's flipping amazing and and just rock it and I think when you when you are like that and when you do that you have fun and life kind of feels easy again so that will be for me and you start dancing on your Michael Jackson plates right so it's all good <laughs> <laughs> I love that yeah embrace the weird I was very aloof and awkward as a child and I always felt extremely self-aware about it and then you know probably I used to be in the entertainment industry. I was much shyer as an actor, unless I was in character than, you know, now as an entrepreneur. And I think a lot of that, you know, confidence and self-assurance, it comes through having a purpose that is really in line with your values. And I think for me, the entertainment industry wasn't fully in line with, you know, a higher purpose. And that's why, you know, I came out of my shell more once I really found my purpose. So you're just a little extra piece of advice, you know, make sure you know, you find a purpose that really resonates with you and is higher than yourself without, of course, you know, forsaking your own interests in the process. So great advice. On to Shima. Yeah, I think all of it is great advice. It's amazing to hear. Uh, the reason I'm asking and why I'm always interesting is when I grew up, I didn't have a role model. Um, I'm Moroccan, born in the Netherlands, and I'm a foster child. Who is my role model? So I decided I'm going to be my own role model. Uh, and hopefully showcase, because you mentioned, Liesl, that some of the people are, you know, you're unwritten, but a lot of kids are not unwritten and uh, are expected to do a lot and make adult decision, but then are not expected to build a company where I really want to show them you can do whatever you want, but I also want to show them it's not making one Instagram post and you're an influencer. It's not making one TikTok and you're there. It's hard work which I do think that in this nowadays, um, it seems like, oh, you can get uh, 6 million in six months, which is <laughs> utterly bullshit, of course. But that's what the kids and, and the younger people are seeing now. So what I want to give to them is ask, if you see somebody you look up to, or you think I would like to have her as a mentor or him, just ask. A no is just a no. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't, your world will not fall apart by asking questions. That's one thing that I really believe. Uh, and I do think that... Uh, Anybody can be an entrepreneur or can manage whatever they want in their life, whether you are an introvert or an extrovert. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with following your passion, try waking up for something that you love, of course, uh, and whatever you're not good at, eventually you can hire somebody for that. Um, so uh, I, I hope that the younger generation are looking more for role models and will be more assertive of saying, hey, I like you. 
I'm so curious of how did you get where you are now? Can I ask you questions or can I be your apprentice, for example? Uh, uh, it's also one of the things that uh, honestly, my first, uh, in, the first uh, uh, woman that came to me, my company for an internship uh, DM'd me on Instagram saying, I love your big mouth. You are like uh, weird online, which I am, because if I think it's funny, I will post it. And said, can I work for you? Can I do an internship? I didn't have that. And I was like, I actually don't need it, but I just created one. I was like, sure, what do you want to do? And let's do it together. Why not? Uh, so I think that's something that I can give back to the women who are the younger professional or the women who are looking uh, for guidance. I love that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's also about creating that opportunity for people. Um, I've done that before as well. Like sometimes you're just like, well, like you said, why not? And, you know, it goes back to the other side too. Like, why not ask the worst, you know, you're going to get is a no. So for sure. Um, Ina. I want to say again that it's a great question and I love all of the opinions and I can say that you can be young and you can be immigrant girl like you who just arrived in U.S. like I was born and growing in little town in Siberia but I always knew that I want to uh, live in America the country which like uh, by my opinion make dreams come true and of course all of your opportunities and uh, I think it's important to know what you want to do. I didn't have a mentor, but I always knew I wanted to do like uh, fashion and something about sport. Like, because uh, you need to understand like your passion to know that because you live only once, like you need to do what you love, enjoy it. And uh, when you just started, like I said before, you just uh, have to keep going and looking around in this area. And like all you said, like uh, contact these people. Somebody say no, maybe Oprah will, will not answer you, but another person will just uh, uh, try, try and uh, be ready for the answer. Be ready for the act uh, action because uh, people will not just help you for nothing. And I, and I don't mean the like financial, I mean your action, like your passion, your activity and everything. Just uh, keep going in your direction, do whatever, do what you love. And uh, when you do it with real life, which coming inside from you, I, I hope that uh, I believe in like, you know, energy in the world will answer you. You will deserve it if you will really strong working on it. Love that. I think a lot of it does come down to mindset for sure. Um, you know, putting yourself in the right frame of mind to succeed and to, you know, seek out that counsel as well. Well, this has been such a fabulous conversation. I can't believe we're already almost at 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, I feel like we could sit here all day long and talk about these issues. And you're such a great bunch, very empowering. I just want to remind everyone that who, you know, did contribute to attend today that your donation is going to uh, Women for Women organization, which is benefiting women who are displaced in Ukraine due to the crisis happening there. So thank you for that. And of course, this recording will be rebroadcasting um, on YouTube. Chances are, if you are um, watching it now, you are watching that rebroadcast and I will be leaving every person's um, social media links in the caption so you can feel free to connect with them and follow. And, you know, again, I want to thank everyone here so much for participating and for taking the time to have this conversation today. Um, if anyone has any closing remarks, I will open up the floor to that. Otherwise, you know, thanks so much and have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening where, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Nadia. Thank you for having us. Been amazing. Thank you, everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.